Hey, today I'm going to show you how to dockerize a Rails application. If you want all the details, you can go to my how to dockerize a Rails application blog post. If you Google how to dockerize a Rails application, it should probably come up. The point of this video is not to go through all the details because I think the blog post is better for that. This is just to show you how it's done so that if you follow my blog post and you get stuck, it doesn't work for some reason, maybe you can watch the video and that will help. So the first thing is the Docker file for the Rails application. So I have my repo here called boats and I'm just at the root of the project here. I'm in the Docker branch, which is included in this repo if you clone that repo on your machine. So as I said, the first thing is the Docker file, which I already have here. I'm not gonna go over this in great detail, but it says use Ruby 271. We're gonna stick our code in this directory called code, which is arbitrary and it could have been anything. Bundle install. Yarn install, before that we have to install Yarn. Um, and that's pretty much it for the Docker file. There's another file called docker compose.yml where we include two services, one for the database, which is PostgreSQL, and another service for our Rails application. Um, the details of all this are explained in my blog post. So again, I'm not going to go over all that stuff here in the video because it's probably probably better for you to read that stuff instead of instead of get it like this. Okay, so there's one last file that needs to be added for the Docker related stuff, which is this init.sql file. So init.sql gets executed the first time the container runs. And what it does is just creates this PostgreSQL user called boats development so that we have a user with which to connect to our database. Okay, in addition to adding those Docker related files, we do need to modify our Rails database config. So that should already be done on this branch here. Yep. So we need these, we need the config to go off of these environment variables, which are the same environment variables that we're setting in the Docker compose file. So that is key. All right, and once we have those things, we can create all of our um, images by doing docker compose build. That will read our docker file and our docker compose.yml and the init.sql and build us some images. That command has finished, which by the way, took a long time, so be prepared for that. If you see anything that's red, it's not necessarily a problem. Mine has this red output but that doesn't mean that anything's wrong. Um, okay, so we've built the Docker image and we can actually do doctor, doctor, Docker images and we can see our two images. This Ruby 271 came from where in our Docker file we said, use this Ruby 271 image as a base image. And again, I explained that more in my post Anyway, that's why that's there. We have this Ruby image, and then we have this Boats web image, which is our Rails application. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can do docker compose up, which will take our images and run some containers from those images. There's one more image that's needed for this, which is the Postgres image. Um, that image didn't get created when we did our Docker build because that Postgres image comes off of a, um, a Docker hub base image. Um, but just now it said, okay, we need that image in order to run this container, so let's grab that now. So that's what it just did. And you can see 
that now it's running the Rails server on port 3000. So let's see what happens when we go to localhost 3000. Okay, boats development does not exist, which is true, we haven't created it yet. So let's do docker compose run, which will run any command we want. We need to specify the container inside of which we're gonna run this command. The container in this case is web. And then we say rails db create. Okay, it says it already exists, which I don't understand why it says that. But now that I refresh this, it says migrations are pending. We could click this or we could do rails db migrate. Okay, and now if we refresh again, we'll see the Rails application. And just to make extra sure it works, we'll do new boat, um, I'll put JSON. Okay, it works. And look, we're running a Dockerized Rails application. So again, if you wanna do this yourself, go to my How to Dockerize a Rails Application blog post. And if you run into any trouble, you can leave a comment explaining your problem and I'll try to help. Thanks for watching my video and good luck.